whatever they need to do with it. That's half the equation. What else do I need to actually use that? The code. Yeah, yeah, pin number. You got it. Yeah. Pin that overlay. Right? And I'll get to the, the back code in just a second, too. Um, the CVV code. ATM pin pad overlay. Uh, device actually overlays particular models and you'll, it'll type through, so you'll type onto it and it'll actually hit the numbers for you, but it also has an, uh, a, 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 a memory card in it. Isn't that cute? Isn't that precious? So, if you're using an ATM and it's sticking out of the ATM, you probably want to stay away from it. You'll notice pin pads are pretty flat these days for that reason. Okay. More ATM scams. Here's an enterprising individual selling an entire panel that can overlay this particular model. Meta gets on the back. Boom! There you go. Wow. And if you want to accessorize a little bit, ATM pin pad and a little camera inside a uh, pamphlet holder. So you can go ahead and look at whatever you want. Want to see if you can see that card to get that CVV number? You want to see what they're typing in? There you go. Want to see how much is in the account? Many ways to do it. All very inexpensive. Except for that, that panel that's got to cost a little bit. Look at that. All right. This is dark market. Once you get that information, in this particular case, uh, we, we went ahead and did an ATM scan, right? Once you get that particular information, we need to sell it somewhere. So now we've got our invite. We're pretty well known. We go into a website. This, this, was, this is dark market, as I said before. This is a form where you can go ahead and, and trade information, sell information, so forth and so on. So uh, this particular incident says, hey, I have a part of bond and it installs my executable. This particular individual writes code, and they want to go ahead and rent out a bot. They need about 4,000 bots per week. Message me if you're interested. And they'll use something like eGold. Uh, eGold is PayPal without any questions asked. That's why I guess right. So, lots of different escrow services out there that can employ. More ads. Uh, DDoS attacks for sale. What's one thing you can do in the black market world that you can't do in the legitimate business world if the competition's kicking your butt? In the black market world, you can take them out. So, that's what you do. You get a DDoS attacker, or uh, somebody that runs DDoS attacks. Distributed denial of service. I can get enough computers. To send enough junk to one IP address, I can choke that machine and knock them out. So what you do is you hire a DDoS specialist, and I'll go ahead and take out your competition for let's say six hours or so, and you send a notice out to all the forums saying, hey, these guys are down to compromise, come to me, I'll take care of you. There you go, business. These dump stickers, apparently somebody was doing some spring cleaning in their apartment and uh, had these laying around. What are dove stickers? Anybody know? Hologram. Yeah, the hologram that's on your visa or American respect or something like that. We all have these lying around our house, right? Right, right next to the uh, camel suit and all that stuff. So this person had a bunch of them laying around that they're not using. They want to sell them fifteen hundred dollars. So there we go. Um, one thing before I get into the next slide. The funny thing about dark market is one, it was one of the most successful car sites on the internet. Two, it was run by the FBI. <laughs> Look up FBI dark market. It's a great story. Uh, they were actually so good that they, they talked to the, the major security vendors out there and created a big profile called Master Splinter, right, from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. If you remember that, right? Made it called Master Splinter, and they got on all those lists that I told you about before. They put them up there toward the top. And then they did that whole nine yards of you know bragging and so forth and so on. They are actually so good <laughs> that according to the story, they actually convinced other car site car sites to become affiliates to Dark Market. <laughs> and then, boom, knocked them all out. Which is great. That's a great story. So it goes to show that there's people on the good side trying to protect us. The challenge is for everyone that goes down, what happens? Yeah, exactly. So we have to be vigilant. Another site example, Cargo Planet, not around anymore, it was around at the time that this uh, was put together. Um, this one's selling called Dumps, right? So the credit card information on the magnetic strip, there's three strips on there actually you don't see. The first one is the IATA strip, that's for when you go take a flight somewhere and put it in, it says, Greetings, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, here's your itinerary. The second one's the good one with all the stuff of uh, your financial information and whatnot. 
third one, if you ever use a Starbucks gift card or something like that, that's the type of Stripe it uses, which is just a debit account with no account attached to it. So, in other words. They're called dumps. And the higher the metal, the more precious the metal, the more money you can make, right? There's different quality uh, here, there, and so forth and so on. You can actually buy services to verify that the information you capture is open and legitimate. So, you have only pennies for the card. And if you want to keep up on the latest news, <laughs> cardnews.ru. So they have their own uh, uh, news group or news site. They did with Google Translate and come through for you. So uh, this is pretty good. There was a, they were just talking about one of the, uh, the more recent, this was in April 2010, one of the more recent sites that were busted. So, so there you go. OK. I won't go into the logistics of finance per se, but I just want to point out one thing, because you've probably heard a lot about this over the past couple of days, um, is that uh, nothing goes to waste, okay, in a bottom line. Nothing goes to waste. In addition, go ahead and, and maybe, uh, in, no, number one, infecting your system. Number two, putting on some uh, uh, malicious software to go ahead and infect other systems. Or maybe stealing your information while you're doing that, like key loggers, remote access trojans, and so forth and so on, to see what good stuff you have on those systems. What they'll do, too, is they'll go ahead and change your DNS settings in the background. What's DNS? Sounds like a clothing department store, doesn't it? Your domain name. Yeah, domain names. Right, domain name services. It's the yellow pages of the internet. Your computer has no idea what a Yahoo.com is. No idea. It's got to go to one of these machines on the web, and there's, there's hundreds of thousands of them out there. It's, you can make them for free. Every ISP's got them. Most companies have them. You use one every day. You go to the internet. But what it does is, when you type in, let's say, Yahoo.com, the computer doesn't know what that is. It looks to the DNS entry it's supposed to point to, and it says, hey, DNS machine, what's Yahoo.com? I don't speak this. And it says, oh, it's this computer address. And it says, no, go there. Oh, that I understand. If I change the DNS on a particular machine to point to my DNS as a cyber criminal, what can I do? Redirect. Redirect. Absolutely. And if you surf along to your normal sites, but once you hit something like bankofamerica.com or what have you as an example, you're not going to go to bankofamerica.com. You're going to go to my version of that. And it may look a lot like the front page of, let's say, Bank of America, just using that as an example. right? But what it's going to do is when you put in your username and password, it'll time out and say there's an error. Most people will think, oh, I'll come back later. What just happened? Yeah, you got owned. Yeah. And for those who pay those, those uh, there's a lot of different technologies to help thwart that. There's actually um, malware that's out there right now that will track the mouse position on your screen and map it to a particular financial site. So you ever see those virtual keypads? that you used to type in. It'll actually track the mouse positions and replay it for you on that site. That's awesome. Good times, right? Not a boring moment. OK. That being said, uh, we're, we're getting toward the end here. I apologize. I'm not checking my email. But, uh, my, uh, my watch is on a flight to Milwaukee, I think, right now. So I'm using my block right here. We'll stay on time. OK. Uh, information gathering methodology for footprinting a target. There's a lot of different methodologies out there you can use, okay? This is just one that's, that's a pretty general one that you can use, right? You're going to have your own methodologies and so forth and so on. The reason why I'm showing all of this to you today, if you haven't, if you haven't thought about it by now, which I'm sure you have, is because you can use these same methodologies to protect yourselves. If you know how they're going to come after you, you can use that to thwart them, right? So take it to heart. Feel free to grab these, right? As I said earlier, I constantly update this. So give me your card at the end. I'll get you the latest updated version. Right? So, methodology, footprint. I want to find out as much about my target. If I'm going to go straight ahead and I'm not going to just run a scam, right? I'm going to go straight for it, right? I'm going to do all the techy stuff. And I'm going to go right in there and, and open a hole in that organization. I'm going to try and keep it silent, too, because now you're my ATM. If I get in and I see your database in there and there's good stuff, I want to keep that open. I want that information to keep flowing. 